call the meeting to order, 2.30. Welcome to the June 11th Board of Assessors meeting. The board consists of three public members with various backgrounds involving real estate, and myself, I'm the chairman of the board. I'm also a city assessor, and as a city assessor, I'm a non-voting member. During today's meeting, the board will be reviewing applications submitted to the city, which the applicant is requesting to be exempt from taxes for religious purposes. A copy of all the information submitted with the application has been provided to the board prior to today's meeting in order to give them time to um, be able to review the materials. Uh, just to clarify for the members of the public in the audience today, uh, this is a public meeting and not a public hearing. So as such, the board will be hearing from the applicant if they choose to speak in order to provide them an opportunity to address the board uh, concerning the materials they have submitted. The board's decision is final and written notice will be sent to the property owner uh, by mail. If the applicant is dissatisfied with the board's decision, they may file an appeal with the Board of Tax and Land Appeals with the Superior Court but not to vote. So the application submitted has been uh, from the Shire Free Church in Madnock. And Ian or Daryl, either of you like to address the board? Mark Edge is going to address the board. Okay, please. Just name your name and address, please. Sure. I'm, uh, my name is Mark Edgington. I, my mail address is 63 Emerald Street, number 506. I'm a minister of the Shire Free Church, and um, I also host the National Assembly of Radio Program. Um, so, like, I want to be straight and, and speak to you guys um, completely above the board. I want to create a dialogue. The fact is, the activists have been here in town for many years, and the city and the activists have gone head to head. Um, I think that, I mean, it, the, the questionnaire seems obvious to me. Um, the questionnaire has not been sent to any other church that I know of. Um, when uh, Dan was questioned about it, he said that no other church has done a questionnaire like this. And I think it's obvious that the activists are a special consideration from the city. And I don't see that that is particularly wrong. I mean, there's been a lot of sort of noise made in that. Um, but what my goal is, is to create a dialogue. And I think that we can see some changes. And just go ahead and uh, get started. So the fact is that the uh, <coughs> Fire Free Church fits all the definitions legally of what a church is in the state of New Hampshire. There's no doubt about it. We've read the RSAs, and that's it. Um, we're as much of a church as the Congregationalists are here. Um, the Quakers, who have no building at all, we have no building. We meet uh, weekly, we have services, we're a church. We're even looking at getting a uh, building with a pointing roof. We look around the region, and we may very well do that. So at this point, we don't have it, but there are plenty of churches in town that don't have it either. The way that I came to the conclusion of the Shire Free Church, I, just, I, I created the Shire Free Church, me. Um, I realized at some point that I go on the radio on a nightly basis and I preach a moral philosophy. Six nights a week, I'm off one night. And that I'm the head of an organization that preaches a moral philosophy. I believe that this is the moral philosophy that was created into the fabric of this reality by its God. That, therefore, seemed to qualify me as a minister. It took me a while to come to this conclusion. I argued myself into it, not out of it. So, I just want folks to know where, where we came from in the beginning. So, um, if the city of Keene knows anything about the activists at this point, they know that they're dedicated. They know the activists are going to take this all the way to the Supreme Court if necessary. I don't think it'll get through that. The fact is the district court um, Judge Burke has already recognized the Shire Free Church as an organization through which people can do community service hours. That gives us a uh, strong leg, legal leg to stand on. Um, as stewards of the taxpayers' dollars, we need to consider the losses versus the gains. $3,500 or so that the activists don't pay. Um, there's uh, $6,000 for the property taxes. $2,500 was voluntarily given because we want leaf pickup, fire service. We believe in paying for the things that we use. Um, I am morally opposed to a public school system. There's no doubt about it. You don't have to agree with me. You just have to understand that that's what I think. Um, we have donated money to private schools 
here in town. We intend to, tend to continue doing such a thing. But that's our belief system, and that's why we want this parsonage. We intend to continue to get money the way we have. Uh, at this point, there's a difference of $3,500 on an annual basis that you guys aren't getting out of the property, off the tax rolls, as it, as it were. But a court case could go into the high tens and low hundreds of thousands of dollars. It costs money for lawyers and stenographers and all these folks. And as stewards of the uh, tax dollars, I think that that's something that she should take into strong, strong consideration. We believe in a voluntary society where people can voluntarily associate. That means that it gives the city a whole new way of dealing with the activists if this person is granted. It allows the city to say, you know what? We're not really interested in your shop marks in Central Square. Here's your $2.37 a year that you contribute to Central Square. You can have it back. We don't want it. Why don't you keep your chalk marks off? And then according to our philosophy, it's not ours anymore. We don't have the ability to do that. Not all of these years. But um, that's me, right? Um, so if you can, at this point, you really have an ability to use the activist belief system in order to control behavior. And I think that that's a whole new way that the city can go about dealing with things. Thanks. Are you next speaker? No. Any questions from the board? Just a clarity thing, Mike. Sure. I've never heard of the Chicago Free Church. That was in the church. Now, there are others in the state? Are there others in the country? There are others in the country. And um, there. Do we have another minister inside the state? I think we have several. Several? Do you have IRS status or donors to, to declare to be able to uh, claim this tax deduction? The IRS is pretty clear that you don't have to uh, file with them to be a church. We um, don't want our donors to be exempt from um, you know, IRS rules. As far as I'm concerned, I have no desire to have 501 c 3 status with uh, the IRS. The state, so, the state so, rules don't require us to file with the IRS. The IRS's rules don't require us to file with the IRS. So if I make a donation to you of $5,000, I can't claim it? That's correct. Okay. Is that one of, oh, never mind. <laughs> we recommend you don't file the taxes. <laughs> that kind of defeats the purpose of, of the public good. You don't, you don't think? No? Um, lots of public good is done. Are we talking about the public good of, uh, of taxes or are we talking about the public good of the church? It's, it's contrary to the, the most fundamental concept of law and the constitutional process. Okay. And I, and I know we have issues with that. Right. All we want to do is separate ourselves from that voluntarily. And um, the fact is, is that that process won't let us separate. And we're using the legal rules as they exist to do just such a thing. And, and, your, and the title of the property has been transferred to an LLC, I understand? No. Nope. Is that correct? No. No. Shire Free Church has been added not. LLC. Say, that's not an LLC. That's it a New Hampshire prior was a holdings LLC and then it was transferred to into Hampshire. a New Hampshire nonprofit. But I thought it was, I thought it said something about. Um, Shire Free Church Holdings, LLC. That's not the owner. It was transferred from you to Shire Free Holdings, and then after that it was then transferred to the church. Is that correct? That's correct. We were concerned with the status of the, the LLC and um, how that would be interpreted, so we changed it over to an answer nonprofit. Do you have a copy of that? Not on me. Okay. I didn't consider that would be a question. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see a copy of the deed. It is Shire Free Church, but I'm not going to be official okay. owner. No it was just a typo. They originally submitted two applications. One was sent back to us in January, and then I believe after it was transferred to the Renanda the Church. Then at that point, they submitted another application to clarify it. You should have both copies of the United yep. States. And that's why they had done that. So if your organization dissolves, what happens to the assets? Yes, yeah, so we have to come up 
with uh, some system. That's addressed in the Articles of Agreement. And where is that Articles of Agreement? It was attached to the question. Mm -hmm. In your in your articles of agreement, it, I, it should be addressed there. I don't have it in front of me right now, but I, if I recall correctly, it'll go back to the Shire Free Church, the larger organization. So right now, both sides, 73 and 75, are used for the church. They're parsonages. Okay. And who lives there? It's a questionnaire. I read the questionnaire, but I was kind of. Nobody else lives in the Shoon Darrow? That's correct. Church Manadnock filed an application for real estate tax exemption under RSA 7223C, in which they request an exemption pursuant to RSA 7223 Roman numeral 3. The basis given by the applicant is that the property it owns, 7375 Leverett Street, is partly used for ministers' parsonages. The applicant asserts that his religious organization is regularly recognized and they constitute denomination, creed, or sect. The Shire Free Church Manadnock registered as a New Hampshire nonprofit corporation, effective December 12, 2013. Their stated purpose, as set forth in the Article of Agreement, is as follows. Primarily, this corporation will assist the ministers in their mission of fostering peace by facilitating interaction with the people calling themselves the state, regarding serving the com community to positive action for charitable, education, educational, and religious purposes. This corporation is established to appease whatever arbitrary and nebulous dictates handed down by whichever monolithic violent governmental agency may turn its capricious attention towards the Shire Free Church, its people, and or any of its ministers, while we go about the good work of spreading the idea of human freedom and morality. Courts have ruled that simply registering with the Secretary of State of New Hampshire or being registered with the federal tax exemption under IRC, IRC 501c3 alone is not reason enough to grant property tax exemption. Therefore, an effort to gain a better understanding of the applicant and how the uses of its property relates to the claimed exempt purpose, the city requests additional information as provided for in RSA 7223C, Roman numeral 2. Ian Freeman has responded to the questions, a copy of which has been submitted to the board, which we have been going over um, in some detail tonight. The applicant defined its purpose as our mission, inspired by God, Allah, the universe, and the inner light is to foster peace, freedom, and personal responsibility. In response to questions pertaining to the tax exempt use of Lovett Street property, the applicant stated that sectarian activities were praying, meditation, singing, spiritual discussion, as inspired, where inspired. The secular activities of the property include eating, sleeping, as necessary, where appropriate. The applicant, in response to a question pertaining to the location of the property where religious ceremonies services occur, stated, 
we believe that wherever two or more church members are gathered for such purposes is our church. Further, the applicant reported that there were five members of the church leadership, those being five members of the board of directors, but that anyone become a member of the church so long as the person signed the Shadow Society Declaration <coughs> and be of peace. It was also reported that an individual may become an ordained minister in the Shire Free Church by signing the Shire Society Declaration and becoming approved unanimously by the board members. A copy of the Shire Society Declaration has also been provided to the board for their information. RSA 7223M states, the burden of demonstrating the applicability of any exemption shall be upon the permit. New Canaan Academy versus the Town of Canaan also ruled that its applicant's burden to prove is entitled to tax exemption. Furthermore, in interpreting RSA 7223 Roman Rule 3, the New Hampshire Sup Supreme Court has stated, in construing religious exemption statute, we do not adopt a liberal attitude because it is a charity, nor a hostile attitude because it seeks exemption from taxation. This le legislative intention is sought without regard to rules requiring strict or liberal construction for certain classes of legislation. We have previously held that the legislation in drafting RSA 7223 Roman Rule 3 intended to exempt land owned and occupied by a religious association that is part of or used directly in conjunction with buildings used by the library principally for religious purposes. So the information submitted by the Shire Free Church, Manamnuk, as reviewed by the City Assessor's Office, does not meet its burden of demonstrating the applicability of requests for property tax exemption in the RSA 7223 Roman Number 3, the property located at 73 w, 7375 Lutter Street. Therefore, it is the city's recommendation that the request for tax exemption be denied. Anyone has any other additional questions or discussion? Or we can take a motion. And I think there's a big difference between form and substance. And I think that's that's our, um, that's going to be provide the clarity. It may be in form, but it may not be in the substance. I mean, when they refer to activists, I think that flies in the face of your church status or your, I, I think a political stance is something that cannot be defined in that regard. It's a moral stance, and the UU Church allows Democrats to meet there. Just, just for clarity, um, you had a, an opportunity to speak at this point, and so at this point, we're responding to the board to, right. to communicate with what we're And, well, uh, and just to address that, um, many churches allow meetings of various types throughout the city. But when you refer to yourself as activists, I mean, that's, that's a clear cut statement to myself, I'm not sure about the other board members, but there's there's an underlying meaning there, and I, I'm just putting that out there.
blatant liar, including you behind the camera. Now, we, we really have nothing. 